ho ho you can follow me ho 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 i can hear you ho 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 merry christmas everybody know it's the topic you know red like ruby everybody know this guy right uh, this is santa claus and uh, please raise your hand uh, who knows this guy <laughs> not everybody uh, he's called in in poland he's called jadek mruz in ukrainian i suppose dead moroz is it right <laughs> and in english it's like uh, grandpa freeze or cold it's uh, Soviet response or Russian response to Santa Claus and these two guys basic, basically do the same they give presents they give presents to little children children because little children loves presents especially candies and toys me too I love toys I love playing with toys and one of my favorite toy uh, from the time when I was very little there are Lego toys and when I was a kid I loved to enter the Lego shop and see all these all these boxes a lot of them I wanted to play with them all I it was problem because I didn't know which box choose because you know here it's uh, X-Wing and Castle and Pirates and Lego Technic and everything is great and I want to play with all of these tools but basically I don't have time okay when I was a kid I had a lot of time but I didn't have money for all of them and I had to choose some uh, toys and little kids love to play toys and we as a programmer we are also like uh, little kids but we call our toys tools. This is my tool and uh, I do my job with this tool. So I need this because this is a tool I need to my, my work. It doesn't matter, it's shiny and everything. No, no, that's my tool, that's not toy. And Ruby developers, uh, we especially are fancy of some tools. And it all became a few years ago. It, it is something like seven years since uh, DHH announced Rails. And there was this screencast block in 15 minutes. And every, every board, Dev Java and PHP developers, they, they were like, wow, this is awesome, this is amazing. You can, you can write an application in seconds in minutes and it's it's less complicated than java it it doesn't have all these fi files xmls and bullshit and it's cleaner and more uh, more elegant than uh, php so we jumped into this tool toy rails and ruby of course and we were writing writing uh, application we we started our Ruby jobs and it was great. We have great time, I had great time. But after some time, when I was creating yet another advanced CMS, CRS, startup, whatever, lots, lots of passwords, I get bored. Because when you play with some toy, no matter how great this toy is, after some times, you are just bored and you want to try something new, something great, something you, you, you haven't played yet. And uh, in this year, and we have some new toys, such as not only SQL. It's not neglecting SQL, it's not only SQL. There is Node.js, JavaScript. There is also CoffeeScript to write this Node.js JavaScript because we don't like JavaScript, so we have created CoffeeScript. 
and a lot of many other tools. And today I will to tell you uh, my story with playing with these tools, toys. And uh, my name is Alex Nombrowski. Uh, I have Twitter account, whatever. Uh, and I came from Poland, from Warsaw, beautiful city. Uh, we have strong community in uh, Warsaw. Uh, there are a lot of great developers. Uh, we meet regularly. Uh, there are also many good uh, Ruby and Rails companies in, in Warsaw. I work one of them for Connect Medica. We do some medical stuff. And one day, boss came to me and said, Alex, I want you to create an API. And I said, okay. Because, you know, creating an API isn't a big deal. Who, who didn't ever create a, an API? Well, 10 people? Everybody creates API, API except you, 10 people. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's not a big deal to create one. Even porn sites uh, have an API. It's Pink Visual. They create uh, an API for the movies. Their tagline is, you innovate, they masturbate. I hope I don't offend anybody, <laughs> so I will switch. <laughs> and our API had to be fast. That's reasonable. We want very fast responses. Bam, bam, bam. And it had to be strong to work with many concurrent requests, and uh, it, it had to serve a lot of requests. And of course, it is REST API, because that's, that's the way we now do API. We don't create uh, SOAP. SOAP is awful. Uh, REST is quite nice. Everybody know how to write uh, REST. The, Nick knows the best, and, and he says that we don't know anything about the REST, but that's another story. And of course, I could use Rails because this API uh, should be part of my Rails application. And that would be easy because you can create from the scaffold actions and they are already rested, so it's very easy, it's very simple, but it's boring. And I love Sinatra. I love this guy. No, I love this guy. Ryan Tomeko, creator of Sinatra. Uh, he, 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 do, he does open source. How cool is he? he? He's got glasses like rock star. Wow. So Sinatra is great because it's even more, even more elegant than Rails and even more smaller. Everything uh, in Sinatra uh, I like. Uh, and the, the small tiny thing I like the most are the error messages. Because you've got this beautiful message. It's beautiful with this whiskey and ice. And when, when you have a 404 page in development, you, you have empty microphone and you have code you can paste into your favorite editor and you will go on. So I decided to use Sinatra. Okay, Sinatra is simple, but I already had my Rails application and I wanted to use some code, you know, to be, to be dry. So I wanted to use my Rails model in Sinatra application and I can do it. I can use Active Record. I can even open Rails configuration file. That's simple open. Uh, I can, I can get from this file the proper uh, configuration for uh, correct environment. Uh, in this case, it's development. 
I can establish connection with database using this configuration. And finally, I can load the class property I want. And that's great. And of course, I, I, I don't want to load one class, but maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. Oh, I need to use user, or RB. And my user uses device. Device is a great piece of software. It's RubyGam. Uh, and for authorization, authentication, and, and it's great, but it works only with Rails. But I want it in my Sinatra app. I have a problem. But, okay, I can create, I have solution. I can create another user file. So I, now I have two files, one with device and Rails things, and one with Sinatra, and they probably have something in common, and it's not dry, and I don't like it. Well, so I can take device part outside into a module and include it, include green laser, include this module only if rails are defined. And it works great. Okay. And it was for a time, it was good. But after some time, I needed in my API to use this device method uh, to, to use some authentication. And that was the time when uh, it occurs to me that uh, my Sinatra app shouldn't be split from Rails app because basically they, they do all, all almost the same. And having Sinatra uh, separated from Rails, uh, I need to configure uh, Fin on engines or something else. And very easily, I can put Sinatra, this little app, into the ra Rails. Let's say I put it in uh, lib directory. And I then I, I it, uh, just mount in my Twitter killer application as an API. And it's so simple, and it works. And okay, it's slower, because the request has to go somehow through the rails to get to the roots. But anyway, I still have my app in my favorite tool in Sinatra. And what's more, I can mount different version of API under different routes as se separated uh, Sinatra applications. Because you want to version your API. If you don't do it, you do it, it wrong. Because one day, you will have to. Because you don't want to break uh, compatibility with older versions. And that would be everything, because that solution and that works. But, okay, that, that wasn't the first time I was playing with Sinatra and there wasn't too, too many new things in this solution. It was simple, it was clear, elegant, but I want to go forward, forward. Oh. And I want to use the future technique. I want to use cutting edge technologies and think. And I was thinking, what is the future? You don't know the answer. But if you, if you would now Marty McFly fr from back to, to, to the future, you could send him to the future, and he would simply say you what, what will be popular in a few years. And uh, there's a funny fact, because he, he has got a time machine, but he's never on time. He, he is always late. I don't know how he do it. It's similar to me. And uh, I've sent Martin McFly to the future, and he came to me and he said, JavaScript is the future. <laughs> JavaScript is the future. 
JavaScript is the future. I give you JavaScript. No. What the fuck? <laughs> we are at the Ruby co conference, not JavaScript conference. Are you going to shoot me or cut off my kidney or something? I don't know. Uh, why JavaScript is the future? JavaScript is this little small language for silly things on the websites. You know, the flashy animation and alerts and such stuff. Nobody, nobody who is professional doesn't program in JavaScript. But it's not only JavaScript is the future, but they say that server-side JavaScript is the future. How can it be? You want to put this lucy JavaScript into the server-side? Are you nuts? It's all available through Node.js. Uh, some say that Node.js is new Rails. <coughs> who knows? I don't think so. But it's, it's quite popular. It, it helps uh, to create web application in server-side JavaScript. And the, the reason is why it's so popular. It's not that, that Node.js is in uh, JavaScript, because it's drawback. The reason is he is asynchronous. So he, uh, in Node, you don't have standard threads. You have event-driven event uh, programming. So basically, uh, it helps when your application is asking database for something or is calling some distant API, you have to wait for a response. In normal language, in, in normal processing, you have to wait with your application. And you, you do simply nothing. The thread is stuck. But in, in Node.js and events programming, you can, you can say, OK, give me this database information. And when you will finish, do something. Do some code. You create, I create callback. Callback, which should be run after the code execution. And in one callback, you can uh, run another callback, and an another, and another. And you have callbacks hell. It's, it can be very tricky, because it looks like normal function. It iterates through users, gets some tweets, and do something stuff to these tweets, and no big deal. But when you put return at the, after this function, you will probably don't get the results you want, because uh, these tweets aren't processed yet. You don't know when these tweets will be processed. So you have to be aware of this. It's something, it's another, another way of thinking about programming. It's, it's very good to program a few days or few, some time in uh, event-driven uh, way uh, because you, you see these callbacks and these events and uh, this weird stuff. And after that, you are thinking with callbacks. And basically, in Node, there are a lot of libraries. They have even their NPM, NPM uh, which is uh, similar to RubyGems uh, manager. And there is a framework, framework called call Express. And Express is asynchronical Sinatra, right? You create app, you define some methods, and you have func function with request and uh, result, and you do some stuff on a result. So that's very simple to start and play with it. Also, you can use MySQL, 
you can use Mongo. You, you probably there is also a library for what the, what the fuck MQ, and no big deal. But you have problem. You have two problems. First problem is code duplication. And the second problem is code duplication. Because I've written already everything in Ruby, the Rails application, and now I have to write some parts in my JavaScript application. So I don't want to do that. And maybe I can write JavaScript in Ruby, like Thomas said yesterday. So write some validations, some methods in JavaScript, and embed them into the Ruby uh, using some kind of engine. Maybe, maybe it would be good to run Ruby in JavaScript the other way around. I don't know. And maybe we have CoffeeScript. And CoffeeScript is this little language or syntax which compiles to JavaScript. And that's great because I hate JavaScript syntax because all this, all this uh, bullshit. It's too long. It's, it's too many characters and it doesn't look so elegant like Ruby. And maybe, maybe someone of you could write a version of CoffeeScript which compiles to JavaScript and compiles to Ruby. Maybe that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I don't know if it's possible, but that would be great. And then I could write my application in JavaScript and have the same code compiled from CoffeeScript. But it's, you know, this, this all, it's tricky and it's, I, from, what, from one hand, I want to write in JavaScript, in Node. From another hand, I don't want to do that. What I don't want, what I want, oh my God, I'm like woman. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> so maybe just, I, I want event programming. I want event programming in Ruby. Mm, that would be something. And hmm, do you have any library in Ruby? Of course. There's event machine. Event Node.js was inspired by event machine, and event machine is it's great product because it works and it has uh, tons of classes, documentation, tutorials. Finn works on event machine, and also there is this framework called called Goliath, the big one from. Uh, uh, from Israel mythology. I don't know why, why Goliath, not David, because Goliath lost this fight. But <laughs> Goliath is simple uh, event framework in Ruby. Uh, it, it uses event machine. So simply you create some class which uh, should have rack response so free arguments, status code, headers, and content. And then you can mount this application, this uh, class, into the roots. So when somebody calls hello, it will fire the proper object. And of course you can, you can ru run proc, and it, it all works uh, asynchronous. I, I can't speak that word. <laughs> and uh, this way, you can, you can have uh, your, all the benefits from Node.js without Node.js. And that's the future. That's great. Um, uh, here is another example. You can, you can map some... Uh, get some parameters uh, with specified format and then use these parameters in your response. So it's, I like it. And if it's not, still not enough and for some reason you don't want to use uh, evented programming, 
maybe that's a that's good idea not to use it. Uh, there is uh, another DSL called Grapes. Oh, it's falling. And gra Grapes is simply the nicer uh, Sinatra. So it has, uh, it creates roots using this version, using resource, but it's simply Sinatra. But you, you can consider using this. Hmm, benchmark. When I was creating this presentation, I, I thought that I will have some benchmark at the end because you know, my, my boss told me, your API will serve hundreds of hundreds requests. The request w will cover the sky, so we will serve them in the dark. And <laughs> it, it, it won't happen, so I don't have good, good source to benchmark Sinatra and Goliath and uh, Node.js. You can find some benchmark on the internet. You know, you can trust them, on you, or you don't have. 73% of statistics are made up. This number is also made up. <laughs> and <clears throat> it's okay. So why, why am I... Why I was using uh, Sinatra, Node, and Goliath when I didn't care about this benchmark? Did I care about, uh, uh, care about the fast? Nope. <laughs> One person knows this man. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, no, I did it because I love to play new tools. Sinatra was a good tool. Node.js also is great tool. It, it can uh, extend your horizons. It can show you some new way of thinking. So uh, that was great to play with these toys, tools, toys, and that was my purpose. But you have to remember that even if there are some shiny, flashy new toys packed in this colorful paper, Sometimes, sometimes the best toy is the old, wasted teddy bear. And you have to consider and think about it. If you want really use that new tool, maybe the old one is, is good enough. So, thank you much, and have fun with your toys. We have something like five minutes, maybe, or even less, if you have questions. No. Yes? I see you use Sinatra and mount it to Reos Uh Do you try to use Rake Metal controllers, which includes in Reos Stewart? It's lightweight, light controllers without renders, without any uh, additional to rails, only a response body. It's faster than standard controllers in several times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely faster, and uh, I was thinking about it. But uh, before, before I mounted my uh, Sinatra application into the rails, I, I already almost wrote everything in, this, in Sinatra. So I thought, okay, mounting it is 15 minutes with mounting test and so on, so I didn't play with metal. And maybe when someday I will have these hundreds of hundreds, dozens of requests, yeah, that, that, that will be great. But now I, I have very small traffic, <laughs> so that's not a problem. And uh, of course I prefer a more readable solution than the fastest one, you know, premature optimization. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, that's all. Thank you.